Hi there, today on Typical Books, it's a big hometown horror haul. I think this is like my third hometown horror haul. And I do other hauls. I mean, I get books from other places too. And a lot of the times when I'm doing a catch up, I will talk about a book I just got or a TBR is kind of like a haul too. So I don't typically do them. I seem to do holiday horror hauls, Halloween horror hauls, and hometown horror hauls. Now, the reason I do a hometown horror haul is because sure around here there's lots of used bookstores and me and my husband do check out used bookstores whenever we travel i've always done that i mean that's just being a thing when i was a kid we took road trips specifically to buy cheese and books which sounds kind of weird unless you're from northern ontario and you understand that the highway bookshop was near ish to thornlow cheese factory so you could get cheese curds some books eat the cheese curds while you read the books whatever maybe it's a northern ontario thing I used to go road tripping for books and I still kind of go road tripping for books but now I don't really travel a lot but I do travel home and home is where the Alice and the Bookman is one of my favorite bookstores now here we do have a book bazaar we do have uh, black squirrel books which is fantastic we have book market we have a few other used bookstores I do like but there's nothing quite like the horror section at Allison's and I've shown it off before. So this particular bookstore, I have never really asked this. I went in there last week and asked, why is there so many horror novels? Why do you have such a dedicated horror section? And they not only have a horror section with a placard horror hanging over it, they have like a zombie preparedness warning sign and it's quite large. They have a few other horror things, but it's always very, very well stocked, overflowing with horror and a lot of new horror in their paperback trade and hardcover section too, outside of the horror section, which is paperbacks and it is a fantastic trove and it's always been that way i've been going there since i was a baby and i said to her i've been coming here since i was a baby what's with all the horror i've never asked i'm a huge fan and she said not only are a lot of their patrons huge horror fans it seems that north bay where i'm from is a horror city and they get people that aren't even regulars bringing in a lot of horror and the owners are horror fans so that clinched it. I mean, it's not just me. It's not just the few people I know that frequent the store, but it is the city and the owners. So, hey, if you are in Northern Ontario, or if you end up here, there, definitely give Alison the Bookman a try. So we'll start with the thing that is the newest, The Last Final Girl by Stephen Graham Jones. Uh, I'm late to the Stephen Graham Jones. Everyone's reading The Only Good Indians right now, but last final girl i've never read so it was a real steal actually uh for a pretty much impeccable used copy so very nice very excited to get to this next we have someone's watching by andrew niederman this is the guy that wrote pen and a lot of oh i've moved them yeah, my vc andrews novels yeah so andrew niederman and the author of pen and brain child very interested to check this out this hole's kind of big. This might take a while. So The Brides of Lucifer by Miriam Lynch. I think I've read this before. I went through a big phase of if it had Satan on the cover and yellow on the spine, it was guaranteed a really good time. So I did pick up quite a few of these sorts of books. I think I've read this one, but hey, Thomas Altman, Black Christmas. This has been on a few other people's reading lists and a few other hauls I've seen in the last year. It's not related to the film, apparently, but there are some things that sound similar to me. And I have a, a sneaking suspicion that the film is based in a true crime story that happened in Montreal. So I am very interested to read Christmas in Murdoch, a time of cozy, safety, snowy sidewalks and caroling children. But this holiday season, someone is baiting Sheriff Dunsmore in a bizarre and deadly game. Someone is stalking the young women he knows and loves, seducing them with icy steel, leaving them for him to find far too late. So yeah, Black Christmas. Stories of Terror from the Shadow Land of Inner Space, Mind in Chains, edited by Dr. Christopher Evans. And I love this art. What is going on here? A Mind in Chains, no doubt about it. Wow. Yeah. There are some interesting names here. We've got Ambrose Bierce, M.R. James, Saki, which I haven't read enough Saki. When I was a kid, I was transfixed with the stories of Saki. And that's something I should research. I don't know much about Saki. 
J.G. Ballard, and a few other names I don't know. So, hey, very interesting collection. Speaking of interesting, I've never heard of this, Tibbs House by Sam Holroyd. I am going into this absolutely blind. It's a novella-length short paperback from New English Library. It is, I believe, 77. Yes, 77. So I am very interested to get to this little tiny thing. What mysterious phenomena is it that is such a closely guarded secret in the community? What link is there between Jillian and Tibbs' house? Will Bainsbridge moves into Tibbs' house, an old country cottage where he falls in love with Jillian Hart, a young girl who lives nearby. But strange incidents begin to force them apart, destroying their love. So it seems to be a little gothic, a little neo-gothic. 13 Tales of Terror by 13 Masters of Horror. When I saw this, it jumped out at me like, oh my gosh, I think I've read this before. And that would lead me to believe I have read R.L. Stein before Red Rain, because that was the only R.L. Stein I've ever really read. And I've never read any Christopher Pike that I thought. So maybe I have. Seeing some of these other names, I don't know any of these other names, except the two that are obviously in larger print, go figure. So interesting to get to some short stories. I might get um, some videos going where I talk about short stories. I might do some like really short Sunday reads perhaps because I do read short stories regularly, at least one a week, if not several in a week, if I don't read one every day. I was very interested in these short stories. So I picked up a different collection, Dark Voices 4. I'm just going to leave this sticker on there because I'm afraid I'm going to ruin it. Edited by David Sutton and Stephen Jones, Dark Voices 4, The Pan Book of Horror. And it's just the cover that totally got me. So uh, we've got some authors I'm not familiar with. Could be because they're British. We've got Graham Masterton, David Show, and Jar R. Lansdale, among at least 13 others that I don't recognize. Passion, pain, hauntings, nightmares, sacrifice, psychos, love, death, dismemberment, deviance. In Dark Voices 4, the reign of terror continues. I kind of want a boy's life. We've got uh, Robert McKinnon, Gone South. This sounded interesting to me. I liked the cover art. It reminded me of something like a Southern Gothic, so we'll find out. Flooded by Memories, Poisoned by Agent Warren, and Desperate for Work. Dan Lambert kills a man in the moment of fear and fury and changes his life forever. Pursued by police and bounty hunters, D Dan flees south toward the Louisiana bayous. Heading into the small land, he meets Arden Halliday, a young woman who bears the vivid burdens of her own past and is searching for a legendary faith healer called the Bright Girl. So it sounds like an interesting journey, nevertheless, something summary, if I even get to it this summer. I've been enjoying James Herbert, and I kind of want everything in hardcover, but I couldn't resist this with a lovely, very plain cover, James Herbert Moon. A number one bestseller, no doubt. He had fled from the terrors of his past, finding refuge in the quietness of the island, and for a time he lived in peace until the sightings began. Yeah. Very interesting. Barry Wood, Doll's Eyes. I've never read any Barry Wood, and I keep wanting to read Barry Wood, and I kept passing this particular book by. It's been on those shelves for a while, and I finally just picked it up. Eve Klein was born with a gift she doesn't want. It drove her husband away and her mother to suicide. It forces her to see things, to know things. In her mind, she can see the pain, the terror, the blood, and the eyes, cold and merciless, alive yet dead. Destiny has brought her to a remote and mountainous place with no avenue of, of escape, for the killer's glassy doll eyes are now focused solely on Eve Klein, and he's coming for her now. I don't think this is anything like the eyes of Laura Mars, but I want it to be. I bought this on the cover alone, and judging from the price tags, remnants, uh, other people have as well. Quick the Quick by Lee Ellis. In a quiet town, a young bride is seduced by an ancient and consuming evil. It may not have a yellow spine or Satan on the cover, but I think it will be a good time. Young newlyweds Jen and David Medlin could see the Great White House from their bedroom window. They were fascinated by the local stories about the mansion and the aura of glamour surrounding the glittering, talented people who gathered there. But there were rumors of strange rituals in the deathly stillness of the night. So it's like pre Hell House, Hell House maybe. I just love the cover. This is another one I'll, I'll show a close up of because it is just such a lovely thing. And I guess maybe I will use an oil trick to get these stickers off. I don't know. It's really 
I am scared to ruin these beautiful, weird covers. In the tradition of the Exorcist, Succubus by Campo Verde, a possession, passion, and forces from beyond. Is Thomas Benton's wife, Rena, a demon? Is she possessed by a passionate or evil spirit or both? We will find out in Succubus. Yeah, lovely stuff. $1.50 when it originally came out. This had come from the Cash Bay Library, it's stamped. It doesn't have a proper copyright page. Well, who knows? I guess it's just an ageless book. We'll never know how old it is. Manor Books Fiction. Weird. And a reread for me. Beast House, Richard Lehman. One of my favorite Richard Lehman books. Uh, Out the Lights is another favorite of mine. And it's hard for me to judge. I'd say this is one of his softer ones, but I have a high tolerance when it comes to this sort of splattery gore and uh, crazy balls out no filter bullcrap that Richard Lehman seems to write. I love his work though, and I wish I had a copy of In Lehman's Words. The house known as Beast House has become a museum of the most twisted and macabre kind. It is a monument to its own infamous past. On display inside are wax figures of its victims, their bodies mangled and chewed, mutilated beyond description. The tourists who come to Beast House can only wonder what sort of terrifying creature could be responsible for such atrocities. Surely nothing human. The Beast House. This is the last from the hometown horror hall, Jack Ketchum's Red. Now, um, this particular book had been, I brought it up in a previous episode and I went there looking specifically for Jack Ketchum and I did, I was surprised to stumble upon this, but I'd never heard of it before. And it's weird when Jack Ketchum keeps surprising me with titles I'd never heard of. Uh, it turns out that my husband had watched the film and not known it was a book. And once I discovered the book, of course, I didn't know it was a film. So I'm very interested to read it, have Chris read it, and then maybe we'll watch the movie. That would be kind of a cool thing to do. So apparently it is a very uh, animal cruel treat centric book. And it starts out with something like that. Winner of the Bram Stoker Award and author of The Lost. I really enjoyed The Lost. That was another one that was uh, based on true crime. And I have this theory that almost all of Jack Ketchum's work is based on uh, true crime. So I'm interested to hear or know if this story is. It all started with a simple act of brutality. Three boys shot and killed an old man's dog. No reason, just plain meanness, but the dog was the best thing in the old man's world and he wasn't about to let it pass. He wanted justice and he'd make sure the kids paid for what they did, even if it cost him his life. They picked the wrong old man to mess with and as the fury and violence escalate, they're about to learn that the hard way. Red. And not part of the hometown horror haul, but since, oh, March, I had ordered this, or May, perhaps. Um, Secrets in the Dark. This is the second of the Black Winter series by Darcy Coates. You can't outrun the stillness. Winterborn Hall is not safe. Even as Claire and Doran scramble to secure the ancient building against the ravenous hollow ones, they face something far worse. Claire's sister has made contact, but she's trapped and her oxygen is running out. And that is where the previous book left off. So that is not spoiling a thing. Hundreds of miles separate Claire from Bath. The land between them is infested with monsters and the roads are a maze of dead ends, which is mysterious because there seemed to be one road in and out from Winterborn. Claire has to choose between making a journey she knows she might not survive or staying safe in Winterborn and listening as her sister slowly suffocates terrifying and I'll bet that's the first chapter right so it's not spoiling anything I trust and I'm very interested to get to this I want to read it right away but I also want to wait until it's closer to the cold season here to read something that is steeped in snow so there you have it a giant haul of a whole bunch of horror novels from my hometown favorite bookstore hope you enjoyed this little look what I got session and thank you very much for checking it out. If you've read any of these books let me know or let me know of course what you're reading right now. I always want to know and be sure that you have an ooky spooky day.